Soraya, formerly known as Paige in WWE, showed up after the four-way AEW Interim Women's Championship match at AEW Grand Slam and later confirmed she was officially signed to All Elite Wrestling. Soraya suffered a career-ending injury in 2016 during her tenure in WWE. So what could she be up to now that she's a part of AEW? There's recently been a report claiming WWE has tampered contract rules and contacted several other AEW talent to convince them to jump ship. Today, we'll tell you all of the details on the tampering allegations, the latest news regarding Soraya's arrival to AEW, and the latest rumors about CM Punk's future in AEW. A lot has been said online about all the work that the AEW women's division still needs. Not only is their female talent pool weak in comparison to WWE or even TNA's women's division, but it sometimes feels like Tony Khan puts little to no effort to push or elevate the women outside of a select few names. And with how the booking of some recent signings for the women's division like Ruby Soho and Athena Palmer have turned out, it's been reported that there's generally not a feeling of excitement among female free agent talent regarding an AEW run. For instance, Soho and Athena, two veterans who are easily among the top performers in ring-wise on AEW, came in with an enormous hype train backing them up just to end up being mostly fodder for the likes of Britt Baker and Jane Cargill. Nobody will complain about their paycheck, but reports indicate that there isn't a feeling of legitimate growth for the women's division within the company. Enter Soraya. One of the most beloved and popular female wrestlers of the past decade, Soraya became a worldwide sensation when she defeated AJ Lee for the WWE Divas Championship on her debut match on the Raw after WrestleMania 30. She was one of the pioneers for the women's revolution that led to WWE not only ditching the term divas, but actually starting to put some major focus on delivering quality in-ring women's matches instead of just using them as eye candy. Unfortunately, her WWE main roster career was extremely brief, as in late 2017, Soraya suffered a career-ending neck injury during a house show match. The contest had to be stopped, as it hadn't been the first time she'd injured her neck, and it would mark her last ever wrestling match. Soraya remained with WWE on various non-wrestling roles after her retirement, including SmackDown General Manager, Broadcast Contributor on WWE Backstage, and Manager of the Kabuki Warriors, Asuka and Kairi Sane. She recently announced her departure from WWE on June 2022. Before AEW Grand Slam, Tony Khan made some huge promises for the show and said fans would not leave disappointed. Despite all of the hype, nobody expected Soraya to show up. After Tony Storm retained her AEW Interim Women's Championship, Britt Baker, Serena Deeb, and Jamie Hayter attacked Storm before Soraya made her appearance. According to several reports, Soraya is yet to be cleared to compete or to be involved in any sort of physical activities. This explains why Soraya basically just ran away all of Baker, Hayter, and Deeb on her way to the ring, despite being outnumbered. It's worth noting that Soraya already appears on the AEW roster page with an O&O record mark, which indicates that perhaps they're planning on eventually having her compete. AEW Women's Champion Thunder Rosa, who is currently recovering from a back injury, also hinted at Soraya returning to the ring on a recent appearance at Busted Open Radio. I know that fans are very excited to see her, because they haven't seen her wrestle in a while, and they're very eager for that," said Rosa. Regardless of whether Soraya will eventually be cleared to compete, or she will act as a coach or producer for the women's division, this is undoubtedly one of the best female signings in AEW history. And if the former Paige ends up making her long-awaited return to the ring on AEW, she could very well become the biggest female signing in the company's history. Speaking about contracts, there's recently been some updates regarding the status of several AEW competitors and their futures within the company. As for CM Punk, 
Dave Meltzer from Wrestling Observer Newsletter reports that nobody is speaking still regarding the backstage fight that took place after All Out 2022. The private investigations appear to be ongoing, which is the reason why most of the details are still kept quiet. But after initially having two sides of the brawl story, the general consensus is now that it was CM Punk who threw the first punch. This explains why most of the heat fell on him. Punk reportedly admitted to throwing the first punch and is backed from an initial claim that said the Young Bucks kicked down the door to enter his locker room in a hostile manner. The only disagreement at this point is, were the Bucks really aggressive? Was CM Punk genuinely afraid of his safety when they came into his locker room? Or did he start throwing punches out of anger and frustration? Meltzer added that he doesn't expect to see Punk in AEW again. Wade Teller of PW Torch recently reported that AEW is working out a contract buyout with CM Punk. This is yet to be confirmed, but it makes the most sense, as there appears to be some clauses in Punk's contract in relation to injuries that don't allow Tony Khan to fire him on the spot. Punk suffered a torn muscle in one of his arms during his AEW Championship match at All Out, an injury that required surgery and is expected to keep him out of action for around eight months. Punk isn't the only messy contract situation AEW is going on at the moment, as we've previously covered the other talent having issues. AEW granted Malachi Black his release, and it appeared two other major stars want out of the company as well. While there wasn't a lot made out at first from Cash Wheeler and Dax Hardwood of FTR being removed from AEW's upcoming video game, there is a report claiming that this was completely by design and not by accident. The report claims FTR want out of AEW and have been in communication with Triple H and Shawn Michaels, who were two of their biggest supporters during their time in WWE and NXT. FTR, formerly known as The Revival in WWE, had a very successful run in NXT before being called up to the main roster where they constantly butted heads with Vince McMahon regarding their creative direction. FTR are obviously still under contract with AEW and can't just leave on their own, as Tony Khan would have to grant their releases in similar fashion to Malachi Black's situation. The report adds Triple H has lawyers ready for FTR in case the bidding becomes a legal battle regarding their contracts with AEW. Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly are also being mentioned as talent Triple H and WWE are willing to fight legally for should AEW try and play hardball, which once again comes to nobody's surprise since they were another top act during their NXT run as a part of the Undisputed Era. AEW has accused WWE of contract tampering, and if rumors are true, it seems WWE is willing to spend some cash on legal battles should some of their former talent want to return to the company. After enjoying massive success during their first couple of years since launching, AEW is truly facing their first major uphill battle on the talent front, with the multiple backstage situations they have going on. Even amid all of the chaos, AEW still has an enormous talent pool to work with and key alliances with other wrestling promotions that will always help them to keep the show moving forward. But one has to wonder, how many top talents have to request their releases before business starts going south for the upstart company?